let me show you an example. In this example, we have a file called binary.csv and the dependent variable is admit. So whether a student was admitted to a university or not. So zero means not admitted, one means the student was admitted. And in this example, we have three independent variables. Whether a student will be admitted or not, that is based on three variables in this particular data set. What was the GRE, GPA, and the rank of the place from which they are coming. So suppose somebody wants to join a master's program or MBA program at a university, and they are coming from a university where they completed their undergrad, and if that university has a very high rating or high ranking, then probably the chances may be better and so on. For reading the file, I have showed you that you can import the data set. There's another way also you can read a file. You can use this uh, command, but you have to specify where your file is. So you'll have to find the directory where your file is, and you have to put the file name like uh, binary.csv in this case and you can read the file. So I'm going to show you all these steps. Now the next thing is we, we have to make sure that when you make two-way contingency table of categorical outcome and predictor uh, variables, make sure there are no zero cells. Now in our data we have admit uh, which is the y variable or dependent variable. It is zero one. And rank from where the student is coming rank of the college or the university, that also is categorical variable. So if you make this uh, small table, you should not have any zero values. In R, you can uh, specify a variable as categorical out of all the X variables very easily. So in this case, uh, I'm calling actually my, this my data is the file I have read. And within that, dollar sign rank so that has been treated as a factor variable and then we split data into training and validation so i'm using 80 20. i have used a set dot seed one two three four so what it does is when you randomly divide data into 80 20 it uses exactly same seed you'll get the same set of data for training and validation if you repeat the process. IND, that will contain the two samples where one will be 80%, second will have 20% of the data. And uh, we are specifying first one with 80% data as T data, training data, and second one V data, which is validation data. Now, if I run my model, let me call my logistic regression model as my logic. And then I will run this. And if I summarize my logic, this is the outcome I get. So you will notice that GRE variable probability value has no star, means GRE is not statistically significant. It is not really contributing significantly to the model. GPA has two stars. So obviously it is contributing significantly to the model. Out of rank, because it was a categorical variable, R handles it in its own way. You have two, three, and four. So because if any one of them is significant, you have to include rank. So we cannot get rid of rank. Rank will be part of the model. What we can do now is we can take out GRE because that is not statistically significant. So I will remove GRE on the next slide and rerun the model. So you can see there is no GRE. And then this is my final model because now I have significant variables in the model. So once we do that, then we can do prediction. And I'm storing results of prediction in PRED. And I'm doing the prediction using my logic model that we developed on the last page. And I'm doing prediction for the validation data set. So I'm using V data. Now, another thing that we do after uh, doing the prediction and developing the model is misclassification error. I will show you what it means uh, 
while running it in R. And then it also gives you misclassification error of 0.29. So almost 29% misclassification error exists in this model. Uh, logit binary, so that's the R file. It has all the codes that I showed you. So as I mentioned earlier, you can import your data set as you had done earlier, or you can run this line, but you should have your own directory where your file is. Let me do it this way. And heading is because we have a heading, we'll import this. So the file is there. Uh, admit, that's the dependent variable, and GRE, GPA, and rank are the independent variables. Now, this file is called binary. What I can do is, because I'm using my data name, I can say my data and binary. Binary will become my data now onwards. Now, if you look at summary of my data, you can run that line. So it gives you minimum, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and maximum values. And then if you run this line, it shows you how often a student was not admitted and uh, what was the rank of the college. And how often when the student was admitted, what was the rank of the college. But basically we do this to make sure there are no zeros here. like you have minimum 12 and maximum 97. So the frequencies are between 12 and 97, no zero, so it should be fine. When we run this line, it uh, it is telling R that this uh, variable rank is a categorical variable. So I will use set seed also, one, two, three, four, so that my results are repeatable. And then I run these two lines. So now my data is split. As you can see on the right, out of 400 observations that we had initially, T data or training data has 325, V data has 75. So the split is roughly 80 20. Now we can develop a model. In the beginning, I want to include GRE also. So once we run this, and look at the summary, you'll notice that the p-value is not significant for GRE. So that means uh, GRE is not contributing statistically significantly to the model. It is not a statistically significant variable. So we take it out. One thing you'll notice is the data we use when developing the model is T data. So we run this again. And then you can look at it. Now GRE is out of the model. We are doing prediction for V data using my logic that we developed recently. And we store the results into PRED. We have done the prediction using the previous line. Let's see how it looks. PRED. So if you run PRED, what you'll notice is all those. Uh, 75 observations in the V data now have predicted probabilities. If you want to look at head V data and run, I'm running this by hitting enter. So when you run this, you can see first six uh, students. And uh, out of first six students, first three were not admitted, and 26th, 28th, and 29th were admitted. Uh, if you want to see what is the predicted probability for the first one in vData, which is the fifth student, so by typing one and hitting enter, I get this. This particular student has, based on the model, 0 0.09 probability or 9% chance of getting admitted. And we know what happened. We have the data also. So zero means that student was not admitted in reality. So that means our model has predicted this student correctly. Similarly, if you look at uh, 26th student, so one, two, three, fourth item in V data, I would say predict fourth 
item in vData. So that is 26th student and the probability is more than 50%. So generally we make use of a cutoff and in this case if we say the chance is more than 50% then we'll say student was admitted. So by that criteria 57% means the student should be predicted as admitted and in reality the student was admitted as you can see by one here. But there is no guarantee that each prediction will be accurate. It is just a coincidence that we looked at two and both, both of them are correct. Let's look at uh, the sixth item. In the vData which is 29th student which is here in reality this student was admitted but the probability is only 0.29 we say that this student will not be admitted and the reality is that the student was admitted so our model may not be right 100 percent of the time one important uh, thing we generally do is to find misclassification error so when you are running this if you look at the first line there is a number 75. So this 75 I have put because in V data there are 75 observations. So make sure that when you run your data, if you have a different number, use that number here. And other thing to remember is we are running this on V data. I have used admit variable which is the output variable. So in your data set, if you have a different name for the output variable, make sure that you use the correct name. We run this one by one. And once you run this print line, it prints uh, something here. This is a table called confusion matrix. So on the left side, you have 0 and 1, which are predicted values. And at the top, you have 0 and 1, which are actual values. Because in our data, we know how often 0 and 1 has occurred. So if you look at 48, 48 means the model has predicted 48 students out of the 75 in vData is 48 will not be admitted and in reality also they were not admitted. So this is a correct prediction. If you go towards 5 here, that's on the diagonal. So that means uh, 5 students were predicted to be admitted because this is 1 here and reality is that they were admitted 48 and 5 these two are correct predictions and the other two numbers 2 and 20 they have been misclassified so if you do 2 plus 20 which is 22 divided by the total which is the 75 so you will get 29 percent or 0.29 the misclassification error of this model is 29 percent so sometimes uh, we develop like uh, different models and compare their misclassification rates. So a model that gives the best misclassification rate or the lowest one is generally selected for prediction.